I'm trying a different video format today, so let me know if you prefer bigger updates like these where I cover more ground with voiceovers, or if you prefer more frequent uploads that are vlog style with less production value. Since not every project in the garage is a car, here I'm restoring these Red Wings that I bought on eBay for cheap. I wanted a durable, semi-stylish boot I could wear around town and while working on the car, and I didn't want to mess up my good hiking boots by getting oil and grease all over them. These boots were filthy, and the leather didn't look like it had been conditioned in years, but after extensive cleaning, replacing the insoles, sanding down the sides of the soles, and then putting on new laces and treating them with mink oil, they're pretty great. All right. We are, one of these days, I'm gonna learn how to look at the lens correctly. Uh, but, let me see if I can stay up right here so you can see the car behind me. Perfect. So, uh, I actually skipped a lot of stuff because I didn't think it'd be that interesting to watch, but I've done the transmission fluid, the engine oil, the rear diff fluid, and brake fluid, and power steering fluid. And uh, right now, I'm just putting the last couple things on. Uh, the sway bar is back on, uh, and it is, um, Good enough, I guess. Like I told you guys before, I'm not really thinking I'm going to keep that one super long term. I think it is a Cobb uh, bar based on the color of the paint that was on it, that light blue paint. Uh, from looking online, that seems to match the Cobb ones. So what I've done is uh, I've painted it red. It looks fine. It's back under there. It's not amazing, but not a super long term thing. The other thing I'm painting... I've started working on the scoop. Now I am using spray paint. This is a, also not going to be a super long-term solution. But what I'm doing, I've done a few coats. You can kind of see the quality is okay. I sanded it down before I started, but it's only going to look but so good. But I'm going to wet sand it tomorrow and then put some clear coat on it. And long-term, I'm thinking for autocross, I'm going to have to switch back to a, uh, a stock hood. So that's why I'm not too, super worried about this. I just want it to look better than silver and match the rest of the car. And my priority is to uh, get the car sorted, not necessarily to worry too much about the cosmetics right now. So that part's done. And then uh, let's also go take a look at the wheels uh, because I got the tires mounted to them. So here are the RE71Rs mounted to the regular WRX rims. I think they look pretty good. These are 225-45-17s. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mount them to the car, lower it, get it out into the driveway, let it idle. I'm going to take it for a test drive with no hood scoop. I'm not going to film the test drive because that's me just sorting out a couple things. And I kind of just want to relax and enjoy it a little bit, but I will follow up uh, with how the car is doing after I take it for a drive. All right, so long story short, took the car out, went for some drives. Everything's great except front driver's axle is bad, or I believe it is. It's clicking really bad, you know, when you turn. So uh, I'm gonna be replacing the axle and I am having a problem. All right, the internet says this should be about a one hour job. This little divot in the nut there, I have not been able to get that out for anything. I'm gonna try to get you a close up so you can see what I've done. I've broken a drill bit. I've broken a screwdriver or technically horribly mangled screwdriver. Doing quite a few other things. I cannot get that thing to come off and the impact gun is not breaking it loose on its own. So just look at the carnage. So the plan is now I've gone out and gotten a chisel uh, and borrowed some hole punches from a friend and I'm going to just destroy the nut at this point. That's the plan is completely destroy it and take the whole thing apart. So get ready for a time lapse. Well, it's off. There you go. I'm not proud of the things I did, but I win. Now, unfortunately, I was wrong about my diagnosis. I'm still showing it to you because that's an important and frequent part of working on cars, but the axle turned out to not be the problem. It did have tears in the boot and was throwing grease everywhere, so it's not at all a bad thing that I replaced it. I can keep the stock axle, rebuild it, and have a decent spare in case my new advanced auto axle ever wears out. But after replacing the axle, the noise was not at all different. That was a little demoralizing and the car sat for a day where I thought through other possibilities. I didn't film this part, but I put it back up on stands, took the wheels off, and retorqued every single piece I'd installed on the car since I bought it. 
It took a few hours, but since the noise was new, it had to be related to something I'd done. I did this in the spider years ago, and I think there's actually a video of it on the channel, because I had a miscellaneous clunk somewhere in the suspension that I couldn't find. So I went through, retorqued everything. I found one bolt that was only at like eight pound feet and should have been at 25. And after I retorqued that, everything was good. So in the WRX, I did find a slightly loose sway bar end link, but nothing that was causing the noise. I went back out and drove it again, and then figured out that lightly skimming the brake pedal made the noise stop. That made me remember that when I'd replaced the brake pads, the passenger side caliper had a piston that didn't seem to move as smoothly as I was used to. But since the brakes worked fine and hadn't made noise up till now, I wasn't worried about it. After noticing that using the brakes made the noise go away, I did some more troubleshooting and figured out that the passenger side brake pad could wiggle about one millimeter up top. The caliper was partially frozen open. The other piston in the caliper worked, so under normal usage the brakes seemed fine. But I didn't want to take the chance since I'm racing the car, so I bought refurbished brake calipers and threw them on just a couple days before the autocross season started. You can see here that the old caliper was definitely partially frozen, so they're going in a box to also be rebuilt sometime in the future if I need them. Okay, uh, rattle can job is looking all right. It's cured for a little while. Um, I'm sure this is not gonna be my best paint job ever. Actually, this is one of my first rattle can jobs for a car, so like I've said before, I don't think this one's gonna turn out amazing, but it should keep the scoop looking better than the uh, red one that came with the car and it should look better than leaving it silver and then uh, providing the car is doing well in a couple months or something or as soon as this paint starts to look bad I can uh, maybe respray it and do a better job or learn more about it or something else so uh, the base coat is on enough I think so now we're gonna do some clear I've got the products I'm using down in the description like I said in the clip my goal is not to do the best job possible but to see if I can do a decent job in not much time I frequently do this when I'm trying out new methods or solutions to a problem. If a decent job lasts a while, I usually learn enough doing it the first time that I can do a really good job when it's time to replace the first try. This doesn't apply to everything, of course. Sometimes you need to do the absolute best you can the first time. But for something like painting that I don't have much experience with, I want to get an idea for how good I am at it before spending a ton of time trying to be better. Without knowing the parts I need to improve on the most, I might waste time. So, I'm using basic black glossy paint and a decently nice clear coat that's highly recommended. You really need to use a respirator while spraying clear. I got a great cheap one that I linked in the description. I sprayed base coat one day, clear a couple days later, and then moved on to sanding after the clear coat had had a few days to cure. So, from what I've always heard, prep and finishing work matter more than the actual painting, and I think that was true for me. I soaked 800, 1500, and 2000 grit sandpaper in a mixture of water and a cap full of optimum no rinse for lubrication. I normally use a hard sanding block and wrap the sandpaper around it, but this time I found that it worked better to wrap the sandpaper around a sponge, so I still got the rigidity of a block, but I was more able to contour the sandpaper to the scoop. Sanding took about 10 minutes for each grit, so it didn't take long to have the scoop ready for polishing. I wiped it down with a 50-50 mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water, and then taped off a section to do a test. You always want to use the least aggressive option that will get you the results you need, because compounding and polishing is cutting down your clear coat or single stage paint, and you want to take off the least amount possible. A polish with Meguiar's 205 left plenty of noticeable sanding scratches. This is probably because I didn't use enough steps in the sanding process, so I probably could have spent more time there. But I decided to try Meguiar's 105 for cutting and then follow up again with 205 for polishing. I use a Harbor Freight Random Orbital Polisher. It's not amazing, but I've corrected quite a few cars and gotten good results. I think I'll probably be upgrading it soon though, I kinda like the look of the Griot's Garage Polisher. After compounding and polishing everything, I wiped it down again with the alcohol and water mixture and used a basic Mother's Carnuba Wax that I'm trying to get rid of. I don't think I let the clear coat cure as long as you're supposed to, but again, I want to see how long this will last. All told, I've only spent about four hours on painting and finishing this hood scoop, so if I get a couple years out of the paint job, it'll have been worth it. When it was finished, I was happy with it. 
There's still some light orange peel in a few areas and a few dings in the paint where the base coat didn't adhere as well as I wanted. I think more sanding on the scoop before I started painting would have helped along with using a primer. But ignoring the dust that is really noticeable in 4K, the job turned out decently well. Next, I added weather stripping to the bottom, mounted it to the hood, and then brought the car outside to wash it. Can't show up to autocross with a dirty car. I'm looking forward to doing a full paint correction sometime soon, but this will do for now. In the next episode, we're going to cover the first few autocrosses and see how Cherry Bomb performs. Mm -hmm.